Next, we need to talk about dimensional analysis. Now, this is something that is done a lot in chemistry and it's important in physics, uh, but we're not gonna spend tons and tons of time on it. So it is important because if you do not have the right units uh, for a number when you put it into an equation, you will get the wrong answer. Um, when you're doing dimensional analysis, you need to do four different things. You need to identify what units you have, what the units are that you need in the answer. Um, you need to write down conversion factors and you need to draw a horizontal line and set up the problem. So we're gonna go through this um, a little bit at a time. So on the left side here, we have the units that we started with, um, a couple conversion factors, and then the unit that the answer should have. Now you could have one conversion factor, you could have 12 conversion factors, um, and that all depends on what you're starting with and where you're trying to get to. So here's an example. Um, I get an average of four eggs per day from my chickens. Uh, how many eggs will you have at the end of one summer? Okay, so let's just say you have one summer is 10 weeks. I'm just gonna make something up. Um, and uh, so I wanna know how many eggs in one summer. So even though it doesn't say one summer, that's in one summer. Um, and I know that one summer is 10 weeks. Um, so I need to start by figuring out what goes on the top and what goes on the bottom. Well, if I want summer to end up in the bottom, it's a good idea to start with summer uh, in the bottom over here. And then once I have that, I need to get these conversion factors in the middle. So I'm starting with weeks. Um, and then I also have a couple of conversion factors. I have four eggs per day. So one day is going to be equal to, you could even think of it like one day is equal to four eggs. Um, and then how many eggs will you have at the end of one summer? Okay, so I can get days, but I don't have weeks. Okay, so that means that I need to convert my weeks into days before I can convert my days into eggs. So because I have weeks on top, um, I am going to need to have weeks on the bottom uh, because I'm going to want this to cancel out. And I know that seven days is equal to one week. So if I have seven days is one week, these two things are the same. So seven days is the same thing as one week. Um, and it's a little bit weird because you're like, oh, the top and bottom are the same. I mean, ish. They're equivalent to each other. Um, so I need weeks, or because I have weeks on the top, I need weeks on the bottom because that way I'm gonna, when I multiply this, I'll have one thing on top, one thing on the bottom, and those will cancel out. And then I'm gonna convert. So I have my conversion from weeks into days, um, and now I'm gonna do days to eggs. So again, I have four eggs, um, and I have per day, so that's one day. And because I have days on the top, that means I'm gonna want days on the bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna have four eggs then go on top and one day go on the bottom. So now all I need to do is multiply this together and I'm gonna rewrite this a little bit differently. Um, I've learned that if I write it like this, students then are able to see how this goes and then it makes sense the other way a little bit better. So um, I'm gonna multiply all the things on the top together. Um, and then separately, I'm gonna multiply everything on the bottom together. And so I get this. So I'm just putting all the numbers together and then I'm putting all of the units together at once. So I'm gonna end up with 10 times seven times four. And then on the bottom, I one times one times one. Okay, so that'll just be one. Um, and then my weeks, I have a weeks on top and a week on bottom. Those will cancel out. And then my days on top and day on the bottom will also cancel out. You don't have to worry about it being plural versus not plural. They're the same thing. And what you're going to notice here is that I'm going to be left with eggs on top and summer on the bottom. Um, so I can then multiply this out and I'm going to get a number. And one times one is one. So that'll be a one on the bottom. I can also leave it all spread out like this and cancel out the weeks and then cancel out days as I go along. Um, either way, it's exactly the same. And when I multiply that 10 times 7 times 4, I get 280 eggs. 
So that means that I end up with 280 eggs per summer. Now this gets a little bit trickier if we're talking about volume. Um, so if I have 49.1 cubic meters of water in a swimming pool, how many cubic centimeters of water is that? Okay, well, there's 100 centimeters is equal to one meter. Um, and so I'm going to have to convert my centimeters, but it's not just centimeters. I'm going to have to do centimeters cubed. Um, and so the way you do this um, is you think, okay, there's 100 centimeters per meter. And I know the meters have to go on the bottom because meters over here are in the top. So I have to get that on the bottom so they eventually will cancel out. Um, but because it's just meters over here on the right hand side, I need the, and this is meters cubed over here, I'm going to cube the whole conversion factor. You cannot just cube part of it. You have to cube the whole thing. Okay. So that means I'm going to get 100 cubed. Uh, times centimeters cubed, and then one cubed times meters cubed. So don't forget to cube both the number and the unit. And once I do that, my meters cubed will cancel out. And so my answer is 49,100,000 centimeters cubed. Here are some conversions for your homework. Um, you do not need to memorize conversions. Uh, the conversions that you will need to theoretically memorize are the ones in uh, your equation sheet and I will always give you conversions that you need. Um, just ask me and I will be happy to give those to you. If there's anything else I need to add to this slide let me know as well. Otherwise that's all you need to know and good luck doing dimensional analysis.